So, this video we're covering the layers of the skin, starting from subcutaneous to the dermis to the epidermis. Here is a lovely picture drawn by me. Uh, we're going to go through it step by step. Starting with the subcutaneous, I like to start from the bottom and work my way up. So, subcutaneous layer. What is important of the subcutaneous layer? That's the fat. Adipose tissue, if you've ever looked at chicken fat, the yellow, yucky, globby substance, that's what we have in our skin. That's what keeps our skin plump. That's what gives some of us curves. That's this layer. Next layer up is this layer right here. This is the dermis. There's two layers to the dermis. There is the reticular, which is the bottom half, and there's the papillary layer, which is the upper half. In the dermis, you need to know there are blood vessels and arteries that supply blood and nutrients to the upper layer as well as the dermis. Also in the dermis is collagen and elastin. And those are the little blue lines and green lines that crisscross each other because that's what collagen and elastin does. In the dermis, they weave in between each other and they form what looks like a net. Now, if you look at the skin or the dermis of a younger person, that net is nice and thick and tight and it's healthy. As we get older, this is the substance that starts to break down and those net strings start to snap and fall apart and get thinner. So, collagen, what is collagen? Collagen is one of the most abundant proteins found in the body. They speculate there's anywhere from 16 to 20 different types of collagen in the body, maybe as much as 30. We only need to be concerned with two types, and that's type 1 and type 3, because that is needed for wound healing. So we have collagen and elastin. Elastin only makes up about 1 15th of the dermis. The rest is collagen, and collagen is made by a fibroblast, which is a cell that makes the protein fibers. So that is our dermis. Also found in the dermis is the bulb of the hair. The hair follicle extends way down to the reticular layer of the dermis. Moving up, where the dermis meets the epidermis, we call this the epidermal dermal junction. And it looks just like one of those foam mattresses or an egg carton. You know, those little bumps. That's what it looks like. If you were to peel the epidermis off, that's what you'd see. Um, the first layer of the epidermis above the epidermal dermal junction is the basal layer, and it's labeled right here, basal layer. This is the only real live layer of cells found in the epidermis, because after this layer, cells begin to die. In this layer, we have a regular old keratinocyte that goes through mitosis to replicate itself. We have the mother cell, which splits into two identical cells. One is a daughter cell, which will continue to move up through the epidermis. The mother cell, mother cell stays in the basal to continue multiplying. We always have to have a continual renewal of skin because we're constantly shedding from the top. So we need skin cells to replace those dead skin cells. So these are constantly re replacing the skin at the top. Also found in the basal layer are melanocytes. Melanocytes make melanin, which is the pigment found in our skin. Now melanin is very important because it's our natural SPF uh, in defense against UV rays. Now when the sun hits the skin, the UVA rays penetrate the skin, activate the melanocyte, and the melanocyte starts producing melanin. The melanin goes up through the dendrites of the cell because it's a dendritic cell and it deposits that melanin in nearby keratinocytes. And that melanin, once it's deposited into a cell nearby, forms this little umbrella over the nucleus and that colored pigment protects that nucleus from damaging rays of the sun, protects the DNA within so there's no um, cancer causing damage to the DNA. So melanocytes, the frequency of them throughout the basal layer is one to every 10 keratinocytes. So if you count out 10 keratinocytes in the basal layer, you will have a melanocyte. Count out another 10, you'll have another melanocyte. Now at any given time, one melanocyte with its dendrites can touch 30 other keratinocytes nearby. 
So, when we're talking about hyperpigmentation in the skin, too much color, we have a sunspot come up or a freckle, that's because the melanocyte is damaged. The sun has damaged the melanocyte and it doesn't know when to stop producing pigment. So it just keeps putting it out, putting it out, and that's when we come up with sunspots. Now moving up to the next layer is the spinosum, stratum spinosum. This layer is the thickest layer of the epidermis. In the spinosum, desmosomes begin to form in between the cells. Now desmosomes, I'd say to students, is like little hands, cells holding hands. And the purpose of the desmosome is cell communication. Also to hold on to one another. Because if you think of the cells or the skin as outer space, if they didn't have a way to connect to one another at this point, they would just float away. We wouldn't have any skin. So they have to hold on and keep themselves anchored. So desmosomes form in this layer. Also found in this layer, if you can see that little star-shaped thing, is one of our immune cells called a Langerhans cell. Now a Langerhans cell is really, really unique in that it detects foreign objects or, uh, not objects, sorry, um, foreign invaders, bacteria, virus, um, anything like that that might come into the skin. That's the first thing to sound the alarms, tell the immune system something's up, something's evading, you better act quick. So those are going to be found throughout the skin as well as the deeper layers. So that's our immune Langerhans cell. Moving up, we come to the next layer, which is stratum granulosum, or the granule layer. This layer is uh, special in that it contains granules within the cell. Now these granules are kind of like kidney stones. They're hard, they damage the inside of the cell, it's like an egg with rocks in it. If you take the egg and you shake it, what do those rocks do? Those rocks are going to break up the nucleus or the yolk of the egg. And that's what they do. Those granules are going to break up the inside so that as the cell starts to move up, it eventually pops open. The juice or the nucleus or the cytoplasm inside the cell is going to spill to the outside, flatten the cell, and it's going to become the intercellular matrix that we're going to talk about later. So we're moving up to the next layer. Lucidum or stratum lucidum. Lucidum meaning lucid, clear layer. That is the clear layer which they used to say was only found in the palms of the hands, soles of the feet, but now they're saying they see it everywhere. This is a clear layer. It's also responsible for our fingerprints. So moving up, and as we go from basal layer up, these cells become flatter and flatter. Then we get to the last layer which is the stratum corneum or the horny layer called that because at this point the keratinocyte becomes a corneocyte. It becomes a flat, scaly, hard, protective cell. It's going to protect our epidermis. So it's like a bunch of shields on a battlefield just covering the skin. It's going to keep us safe from anything that's going to invade the skin, bacteria, viruses. It's going to protect us from the sun. It's going to protect us from the elements, anything in the environment that's harmful. So that's our epidermis our dermis and our subcutaneous. Now, on top of the corneum is what we call the acid mantle. The acid mantle is made up of sebum and sweat, and what it does is it forms this protective barrier over the skin, an additional layer of liquid, and it keeps our skin moist, soft, dewy, and it protects us from outside environment, um, especially bacteria. They're actually considering trying to make that an extra layer of the skin, so instead of having five layers of the epidermis, they want to make it six. And we'll get to why that's important, because it adds to the protection of the skin. We'll get to that in a minute. Now, when we're talking about the sensory nerves in the skin, we have five different ones here. First one, or six, is the nerve endings that wrap around the hair follicle. If we're talking about fine hairs on the body, then they are attached to little tiny nerves at the bulb, at the base of the bulb. If we're talking about thicker hairs, you know, arms, groin, head, then those wrap around the outside sheath of the follicle. Another one we have is the Mesner's corpuscle. These are found in the skin, hands, feet. They're responsible for touch, pressure, and cold. They're grouped in the fingertips, lips, orifices of the bodies, and the nipples. Next we have the Merkel's disc. 
These are receptors that go right up to the epidermal dermal junction, and it's a flat little disc shaped nerve. And this one is receptor for touch. So any kind of touch, you're going to feel through Merkel's. Then down here, deep, deep near the muscle or the bone, we have your Pacinian corpuscle. This one, you're going to feel through deep touch, deep pressure, or movement of a limb. That's the one that's going to feel it. Next, moving on, we have the thermoreceptors. First one, the end bulbs of Krauss. These are found in the skin, lips, tongue, penis, clitoris, fingers, and they detect cold. The next one, I don't know if you can see it, the corpuscles of Ruffini. These are found in the fingertips and they will detect heat. Now, moving on, if you've got the whole picture down, we are going to go over functions of the skin. Now, I have a really nifty little, um, what do you call it? Acronym to remember the functions of the skin, and it is called phases. If you remember phases, you will remember the functions of the skin. The first one is for protection. And remember, we talked about the acid mantle. To protect the skin, we secrete uh, sebum or oil, and we excrete uh, sweat. So those two combine and make a nice little acid mantle on the skin. H is for heat regulation. Your skin keeps your temperature or your body temperature a balmy 98.6 degrees. And that's due to the circulation of the blood throughout, but the skin will keep that heat in. A is for absorption. Our skin has to be able to absorb water and other ingredients as necessary. When we put on moisturizer or lotion, we are counting on our skin to absorb that to improve the barrier function. We don't always make enough oil in our skin, so we have to rely on moisturizer to account for that, adding to our protection. Next is secretion. We secrete sebum, which is oil, adds to our acid mantle. We excrete sweat. Excretion is a byproduct. It's waste. It's sweat. We don't need it. And next is sensation, which we already talked about all those nerve endings. So if you can remember phases, you can remember the functions of the skin.